Hey, hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Today I wanted to show how to clean an AK pattern rifle. Uh, if you've been subscribed to me for a while, first of all, thank you a bunch. Um, but this video might sound familiar. That is because I did do a video on this before. Uh, however, there was a few problems with it. Uh, I didn't really like the flow. It wasn't super logical. And um, there's actually a spot I missed on showing getting lubricated. So uh, I wanted to correct that. And so I wanted to do a new one. And there's just a bunch of small things have changed with my cleaning process. So I thought it'd be worth making a new one. By the time you all see this, I'll unlist the old one around the same time. So for anyone who's new to this video, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to show how to clean an AK. As I said, pattern rifle, in this case, a 74, with a bunch of Zenico furniture on it, which has its own caveats on certain things you can do with disassembly or that you can't do with disassembly. When those caveats come into play, I will show how to do the same thing on a standard AK, in this case, just a Wasser 1063. But I do think it'll also be useful for all of you to know as well on some of those caveats with a Zenico rifle because a lot of these same things like you know when you put on rails on an AK uh, especially here upper handguard it does kind of lock it in I'll talk about that and uh, as I said a few other caveats so let's get started here so the very first thing we're going to do let's get this magazine out um, if you're going to be cleaning the mag of course strip out the rounds and then I'll show how to disassemble the magazine later uh, and, but also one thing important I want to note about this is when you're pulling out the rounds, make sure to put them elsewhere away from where you're cleaning because you don't want to get solvents or oils around the primer uh, that can kill the rounds. So just if you're keeping the mag loaded and you're not going to clean it, just put it off to the side. Uh, if you are going to clean it though, I will show that later. In this case, I'll clean this one because this is one I've been shooting and pr practicing with quite a bit. Next, if you have an optic on your AK, Personally, I prefer to take them off, and this of course is only if you actually have a QD lever or anything like that. If you don't, I wouldn't bother. It's not worth having to re-zero it. But uh, if you do, which I do on this EXPS, uh, I do prefer to take them off because it's just one less thing I have to worry about when I'm cleaning, one less thing that can get solvent and oil on it. Now we can actually get into disassembling the rifle. So of course we're gonna make sure we're clear. And also I usually keep my rifles stored uncocked, so with the hammer up. Uh, so this also will help with the next step to just get it cocked. So here's one part where it's going to be slightly different, but not very much. If you have a railed receiver cover in the case of the Zenico or TWS, basically identical here, um, push in what looks like a button at the back. This is your recoil spring guide, and that will allow your dust cover or receiver cover to hinge upwards. If you have a normal AK with a standard, just your sort of stamped sheet metal receiver cover, again, of course, get it cocked there, and exact same, you will push that in, and this will pop out. Only difference is it isn't going to hinge uh, with a few AKs that are exceptions, but in general, this will just pop off. And I'll show how to put this back on later. There's a little bit of a trick to it, um, but for now, I'm just setting it aside. So back to this, once you have the receiver cover out of the way, go ahead and take that recoil spring guide out and you're going to want to, you have kind of a two channels back here. So if I put this back in here, you're going to want to make sure to push it forward first and then lift either up or around in some way. You can go literally any direction and just get it out of that channel and then you can just pull it straight out. Bolt carrier group as well. It will just come straight back, and uh, it's, as I said, it's just easier to have the hammer down then. You can just do that, and we're out. Uh, what I like to do at this point is I do prefer to start with the barrel. Uh, when I first did this video, I kind of was all over the place, but it is a good idea to start with the barrel. You don't need to get too insane about cleaning anything, I would say, unless you're doing you know a huge amount of shooting and not cleaning it, but that's not a good idea anyway. Um, but yeah, there, there isn't any particular care uh, that needs to be done to the barrel, but it just kind of helps a little bit to get the solvent to soak in a little bit better into the barrel, which is why I like to start with it. So getting a cleaning rod here, uh, this is just a simple one you can screw together. I don't really use the cleaning rods that come on AKs. They're, I like to retain them in case I'm out in the field and I need to just kind of make an emergency, like in case there's a stuck case, which I've had happen before. Others uh, kind of nice for that to pop those out. 
Otherwise, I do prefer these because the AK cleaning rod, while it will, of course, go down the barrel, it is a little on the short side to be comfortable for actual maintenance. So if possible, I prefer to go with something a bit longer. Um, I'm a little bit off camera here, but uh, right now I'm at the flash hider and you can see it goes all the way down here. So it, it's just nicer, more convenient that way. Uh, if you have a boar snake, those are also great. Um, I don't know, I kind of just have stopped using boar snakes over time. So make sure you're using a correctly sized patch. And it also doesn't even have to be a patch. This can be like an old piece of t-shirt or anything that you just cut up. Uh, but make sure you don't put something too big down the barrel. Uh, you don't want to get this jammed in there. It's a pain in the ass to get these kind of things unstuck, which I've had to deal with uh, a while ago. And then um, I'm just using Hoppy's number nine, good old classic gun solvent. Doesn't matter what you use, but a solvent. And um, I'm just going to run this down from the muzzle end. If you're into precision shooting, uh, you'll hear people talk about which direction you should do it. It really doesn't matter on an AK. This is something that I'm probably going to say a lot in this video. Um, I prefer the muzzle. It's a lot easier to actually get it into the AK. You can actually get it in from the breech end, but uh, it's quite a bit more awkward with how the receiver is laid out. So I'm just moving things around a bit so you can see this easier. Uh, another part I would recommend taking off if you can is your flashlight or lasers, anything like that. This one is pretty permanently screwed on, so I don't want to have to deal with that every time I clean. As I said, same with the EOTech. If it's, or in my case, EOTech, you know, if you have QD levers and it's easy to do, then go ahead and do it. Otherwise, don't bother. So while I'm scrubbing out the barrel here, I want to mention, uh, I normally just run it through once and then I kind of put it the same patch back through again and just kind of scrub a little bit here to kind of pick up a little bit extra and you can see it, it got a little bit more carbon out uh, and now we have a fair bit of solvent in here so i'm just going to let this sit and i'm going to work on some other parts while it soaks in and this is a very minute detail as well it doesn't actually matter a whole lot um, this isn't a precision rifle it doesn't need to be sparkly clean and another thing if you if you do actually if you get crazy about cleaning your barrel you will actually shorten its lifetime by a decent amount I know some guys like to get really crazy and get uh, like all, every little bit of copper out. There is no point in doing that, and that is when it will cause an issue. So the next piece, I'm going to go ahead and clean the magazine. If you just need a little bit, so like if you have a very slightly used mag that you just want to kind of clean off, normally the follower gets a little bit of grit in it. Uh, you may not even be able to notice it. Uh, just look a little bit right there. There's kind of a line of just a little bit of grime there. doesn't really need a whole lot of cleaning. So if that's the case in your magazine, you can just run uh, like a Q-tip over it. You can see I have some here and just get a bit of solvent over it and just it's good to go. And then just wipe off the excess solvent before you load your rounds back in. Uh, but in my case, I do want to show how to actually disassemble this. Uh, in my case, it's probably not actually necessary, but I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway. So on both your AKMs and your 74s, you will have, on most mags, a little button looking thing here. And what you're going to want to do is to push that in. It is easiest to do this with something like a cartridge. So taking the bullet end of it, just kind of push this in. And um, on these Bulgarian mags like I have here, they don't have a... Normally the Russian mags have a little hole drilled, which makes it a lot easier to grab on. On these, you kind of have to just uh, finesse it and be a bit... There we go. And once you get it started, it'll just hold itself down, makes it nice and easy. Once we take this off, the spring's going to want to fly out. So as you slide this back, and actually, I need to push that down a little bit more. I'm just going to use the cleaning rod for it. There we go. So once you push this back, make sure to put a finger. I usually use my index finger. It's the most convenient. And make sure you hold this down right here. Just setting that down and uh, just kind of walking the spring out just like so and right about here you can just let it go the rest of the way so if you've been dropping your magazine a lot uh, in well depends also where you are uh, if you're in a somewhere that's particularly sandy you'll start to see a lot of that build up on your springs in my case uh, I can see a tiny bit but uh, this isn't too bad what I normally do if it's not too bad, is just wipe it down with a cloth. In my case, I just tend to use old 
socks I have, just cut them up and they work really great, really cheap to clean these and just just kind of like right, wipe it across it. Uh, another way to do this quickly is to take a spray type of cleaner. I quite like this. And I usually like to just spray it across the springs while pointing it away. Um, as I said, if this is super dirty, in your case, if you've been dropping it like crazy and you're in a really sandy place, uh, you'll need to actually like go individually, which is pretty annoying, but if you have to do it, um, just go across every one of these individually with a cloth and just make sure you get all that sand off. But in this case here, I just spray it down like so. And you'll notice I moved. Um, I don't want to get this on my flashlight or on any of the other parts. You really don't need to do a whole lot. Um, as I said, in my case, it's not very dirty anyway, so it'll work fine. This does have a gun. This is a gun cleaner and lubricant, which is pretty, pretty nice for springs. So, And then that's all good. And I'll go back to the table and show how to clean the rest of this then. It's pretty straightforward. So I'm putting more solvent here onto this sock fragment. And I can see there's, you know, you just you just wipe this down. One, the only important thing is just make sure you, uh, as I said earlier, wipe off the excess solvent, especially off the follower. It doesn't actually matter too much on the rest of this, but you'll want to make sure you don't get solvent uh, getting too close to your rounds. So that is that whole part cleaned up. Uh, one other thing. If uh, you'll, you'll want to check the inside of your magazine body itself, make sure there's not a whole bunch of sand in there. Uh, in my case, it's all good. If you have a lot in there, you can use like a shotgun cleaning patch, one of those really big ones, and just kind of run it through several times and just make sure you're kind of almost scraping it against the sides of the magazine body. And um, I wouldn't even use solvent. I would just run a dry patch through. Or if you have an air blower, which I do, those work really great, but I know not everyone has one. Um, but in this case, it's all good. We'll reassemble this. And just slide this through and then pretty much doing the exact reverse process just I like to kind of push in as much as I can before I push this against my stomach was the best way I found to do it and then just uh, start kind of stepping it in just like when we disassembled it and then holding it down again right here so you can see that's under pressure and I'm actually going to switch which hand I'm holding it because uh, the base plate has to come back in from the back and just kind of put it on halfway and you can see it's going to hold it and you can just slam it forward then and it's all good. Next up, let's go ahead and clean the bolt carrier group. So I'm going to start by taking the bolt itself out. So the best way to do this is uh, I normally just kind of hit it back and then just it, 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 the right way to do it is to just, you know, you turn it you go ever so slightly forward again and then down like that. Let me see if I can show that a bit better. So here it is normal and then just go as it comes back and then just right there. And then once you get it rotated out of that channel there, it just comes right out nice and easy. On the bolt itself, you don't really need to do a whole lot of disassembly. Uh, a few months ago, I had to deal with my first firing pin breakage on that Wasser. Um, and I did want to mention on that, if you want to take out your firing pin to clean it, if you've been shooting a lot of lacquered ammo, uh, which I actually tend to, and even then I normally don't have too much of an issue with it, but if you're having like firing pin issues and you want to check that, uh, there are two pins on here, which I'm not going to show how to disassemble because this, I wanted this to be a basic cleaning video, not something super extreme. Um, and that goes a bit more into like actual in-depth disassembly. I'm actually going to use my washer bolt. I noticed it's a little hard to see on that SLR bolt. So you can see here, there's one pin right there, the best angle so the light kind of shines off of it. You have another pin right here. So this first one holds in the firing pin, kind of just goes across it, you can see, from there to there. And uh, this other one holds in the extractor. But generally, you will not need to do that much to, on just a regular routine cleaning. I had this washer for over a decade and I've only had to take it apart to that level once and that was when the firing pin broke. But anyway, the one part we're going to want to make sure we clean pretty well on the bolt is the bolt face itself. It may not look too dirty here on camera but it has a little bit of uh, carbon just there. One thing by the way, make sure you don't get oil in here. Obviously right now I'm just using solvent to clean this up but later. Um, actually, I, there's no real reason to have any lubricants around this area in general. 
And one thing I wanted to mention, on this bolt you can see it's just flat, however on the washer you do have a little channel here on the sides that you can see. Uh, carbon will eventually want to cake up in there. Um, you'll kind of just want to keep an eye on it. This is something that also doesn't need to be super well cleaned like every single time. I shot thousand through it and cleaned it once with uh, an actual pick, just kind of scrape it out. Um, it doesn't really have an effect on anything. It needs to like really, really build up uh, before it would ever cause an issue. That's about the only place I would recommend really spending time and cleaning. Um, maybe make sure a little bit under the extractor's all but just this whole face area. Uh, the rest of this stays really clean. Um, it's a piston driven gun so you don't really need to do a whole lot there. So I'm going to say that this is done. As for the bolt carrier itself, uh, I do like to clean up the piston. Um, just kind of wiping it down. You can see it comes off very easily and this had a few hundred rounds through it and even then that carbon just comes right out. This is still soaked with a little bit of solvent, so similarly, that is about all that needs to be cleaned on the bolt carrier. Uh, sometimes I do like to check under here in the channel that the bolt rides in to just make sure it's clean. Sometimes I've seen a little bit of lacquer build up ever so slightly right there, uh, but not a whole lot. And also here you'll want to check and just a little bit on that same spot, just right here on the side. Uh, and also in here where the bolt actually sits. Um, occasionally a little bit can build up there and it looks like in my case I have some that built up. So just kind of going in there. So that's the bolt carrier cleaned. I'm going to go ahead and put the bolt back in. This is the same process, just kind of push it in at any angle. It doesn't matter at this point. Actually I'll turn this around so you can see this a bit better. And then just take, uh, so if you look, your extractor's right here. Just kind of turn that till it's down and then if you just hit that forward, make sure it just rotates and doesn't fall out on its own. You don't want that. The recoil spring, um, I wanted to address this, you know. This actually doesn't need very much cleaning at all. Sometimes it will, usually when I'm cleaning, uh, even though I pretty much never see any issue with it. I just like to rub it down really quick with a cloth and just make sure there's no grime that I'm missing on it. If I see anything, uh, I will also spray into the spring itself and just kind of clean it out that way. Other than that, this really doesn't need very much whatsoever. One other area that doesn't really need much is the inside of the receiver cover. However, sometimes you will get a bit of sand or dirt in here, so just kind of checking occasionally. Um, in this case, it's completely clean. There's nothing here that needs uh, anything at all. A few more areas that I like to clean are these two rails here on the inside of the receiver where the bolt carrier actually rides here and here on the right side as well. Uh, the top part, it generally is what tends to get dirtier. However, uh, I do like to get a little bit on the bottom side as well, as much as possible, just right there and there. To do this, just gonna use a Q-tip again with some solvent. And I'm specifically kind of going towards the edge. That's where a little bit of carbon and lacquer I've always found tends to build up the most. And to get the bottom, I'll just flip this over. And as much as possible, just kind of holding this at a bit of an awkward angle, just kind of getting in there from the magazine well. And also here on this over insertion tab, which is very hard to see right here, just below the rail I was mentioning before, making sure that that's clean as well. I've never seen these get too dirty, but uh, it is also a spot that uh, you'll just want to make sure it's all good because it is easy to neglect this part, I feel. As for the rest of the trigger group, you really don't need to do much cleaning here. Uh, sometimes some debris can just build up. I would just blast it out in that case or use the spray again. Um, but just kind of look at it and it doesn't need a whole lot. Um, it does look like there's a little bit of lacquer that kind of built up from shooting on my springs a little bit. So I'll just use a Q-tip and just kind of wipe that up. Then one more spot I do like to get is uh, up here, kind of uh, where the bullet guide is, which not every AK has, but you know, just around this area. And this is actually another part that I like to spray out as well. Again, I'm going to move this to not 
spray on the table and all that. Um, I'm not going to record this time because I think you get the idea, just spraying right here. I did a pretty deep clean of this fairly recently, so there's not a whole lot here, but one area you'll want to keep in mind that you'll occasionally want to check uh, is right here on the side. Let me see if I can get that a bit better. Right here that I'm, where I'm poking with the Q-tip, kind of to the sides of the barrel. Uh, some carbon can build up there. I would check it probably every thousand rounds, like you really don't need to check it that often, but you can see there was a little bit of carbon caked in there. So just making sure of that. If there is a lot, I would just get it with a pick and take it out there. Um, unless you're shooting corrosive ammo, which by the way, uh, I guess it's a little late to mention this, but um, if you're shooting corrosive ammo, that's not really what this video is about. This is just for regular maintenance. As I mentioned, I've shot a couple hundred through here before doing this video, which is something you should absolutely not do with corrosive, especially over the time span I did it. It's been a, about a month. Um, if you are shooting corrosive though, make sure to just honestly put a, putting the gun into a hot shower works really well. Um, but personally, I don't really like corrosive ammo. It's just too much of a pain to deal with. There's always, it seems like, a spot that is missed when you're cleaning and then it gets really screwed up. One other area, like I was saying earlier about the upper handguard. So in the case of the Zenico upper handguard and a lot of the upper handguards that actually hold zero, that are railed, um, these are not going to be able to be taken off. Normally, however, if you want to take this off to clean it, and you don't have to, um, again, unless you're shooting corrosive, only exception. But if you do want to take it off to clean it, simply take your lever right here, gas tube lever, and just pull it up. And there's a little uh, hole there that it sits in, you can see. And then you just slide it out of there, point it about up all the way, and this will just pop right out like that. Just like so. I'm not actually going to clean it, so I'm just going to pop it back in here. Uh, to then to do that, you'll kind of want to actually hold it down back here, otherwise it's not going to want to pop in, especially if you have a handguard uh, retaining ring, which uh, I can't really show that easily because it's on the SLR and not on the washer. But if you do, make sure you pop it down until you hear it click, and then it'll go in. If this seems stuck, then it's not in all the way. And it will be tight even when it is, but you'll tell for sure. Uh, one other thing is if you have trouble, you see I just did that with my hand. Um, this washer is pretty loose. Uh, this SLR with the Zenico stuff is very, very tight. If you have trouble with it, take the side of your bolt carrier right here. You can see there's a little groove. Lines up perfectly with the gas tube lever, if you can see right there, and just kind of push it. There we go, just like so. Makes it really easy for those that are quite a bit tighter, and that is the best way to do it without um, like using pliers or something like that, which will almost certainly sooner or later scratch up the finish of your rifle, which is more than just a cosmetic thing, contrary to uh, what some people I've met think. Uh, you don't want to get rust on your rifle. Unfortunately, this washer does have a bit of rust on it. But anywho, if you take off the upper hand guard, uh, and then and the gas tube. This is going to be a lot easier, um, but if you do want to clean it, take a, I would personally use like a pistol cleaning rod, but since I have this on hand, I'll just use this really long one. Um, taking a cleaning rod, this time going from the breech end, because I'm going to keep this in, take a shotgun patch, or even two, because uh, the gas tube is gigantic. And then I'm going to not soak this, but I'm going to put a fair bit of solvent on here. And the reason I don't want to soak it is because I'm going to run a dry patch through it afterwards uh, for reasons I'll explain in just a sec. Uh, but you, it's just annoying uh, to clean up all that solvent otherwise if you use too much. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of move this up and down that way I get every side of it, you know, left and right, all that. It's going to be basically impossible to fully clean out the gas tube, especially if it's attached like this. But it doesn't need to be. If you think about a AR gas tube, and uh, it's usually dangerous when you start comparing AKs and ARs because there's so much different with the systems. But in this case, just think about the last time you cleaned your AR's gas tube, which is, unless you're, you're uh, autistically into cleaning, uh, that's likely never. Uh, this doesn't really ever need to be cleaned either. Um, there's no carbon buildup. It's going to always blast through because it's channeling through the hottest gases. Anyway, um, I'm taking through 
so I have another shotgun patch on here now. I'm going to run it through the gas tube to just clean up any excess solvent. It's very important to do this. You're not going to get hurt if you don't do it, but if you do not clean out the excess solvent, and also don't lubricate the gas tube, um, you are going to get some of that lubricant or solvent mixed with delicious carbon. It's going to blast back into your face. I went to a shooting range uh, many years ago to shoot an AK full auto for the first time, and uh, they lubricated their gas tube, and I got it everywhere <laughs> on my face. It wasn't harmful or anything, as I said, but I looked... It looks strange, of course, and uh, but it's just unnecessary, and also it can get on your glasses if you're wearing those, and then you won't be able to see very well. But okay, that takes care of the gas tube. As I said, you really don't need to do a whole lot on the gas tube. Uh, so that pretty much takes care of everything. What I'm going to do now is get back to the barrel, which we've had soaking this entire time. So the first thing I'm going to do is take a dry patch, and I'm going to run it through the same as with the gas tube, just to clean up any excess solvent, and then we're going to get to lubricating everything. And most likely, yeah, we're still going to see a little bit of carbon come through, as you can see, uh, which is fine, but just the, the way I usually make sure that it's still clean, or the way I make sure it's not still dirty, is um, just make sure the whole thing doesn't come out like completely black. I'm going to scrub it a few more times just to see how dirty it really is. But it looks like we're probably fine. I will run through a oil patch now. So, same type of patch. Going to apply a little, very little amount of oil. Just like about two drops right there. You don't want to use too little oil, but you definitely don't want to over lubricate the barrel either. And I'm just going to run this through a few times, and we're good. Just to make sure that it's kind of evenly coating everything. And one more area to address before we start lubricating everything else that I almost forgot to mention is the muzzle attachment. This is one area that uh, also doesn't need a whole lot of cleaning, but actually there's one thing I want to mention about this. Not all AKs have this, most do, uh, but you have a muzzle device detent pin sitting right there on the top. Simply push that down and then you'll be able to turn this off. Now, in my case, this is a little awkward to do because of uh, one thing about this flash hider. So yet again, I'm going to push this down with the flat on the cleaning rod. Keep in mind, since I'm showing this on the washer, this is a left-handed thread, so the opposite of what you're used to. Turn it right to loosen it. So if you have a 74 or a uh, 556 AK, like an AK-101 clone, this is going to have a larger thread pitch, but in either case, you will have the detent, most likely, and you'll have threads, of course. Um, every so often, like very rarely, I'll just go in here and just kind of wipe the threads off with just very slight amount of solvent. Doesn't need very much at all. Uh, some carbon will build up in here. You'll just want to make sure to clean that off every so often so it doesn't get too caked in. One very important thing, however, uh, that you can actually screw up further if you're not careful. Um, the detent right here, the one that holds in the muzzle device, uh, can get stuck. Additionally, be careful when you are oiling these threads. So it, it, I think it's a good idea to just put a little bit of oil once you're done cleaning these. Uh, on the threads. I just like to do that myself. Um, but one thing you want to be very careful about is do not over lubricate this because you can get the oil to drip down into the uh, kind of the area behind where this detent is and you cannot get to this unless you actually take this entire front sight post off. Um, this can get stuck when you push it down all the way if there's oil in there because it'll then get caked in with carbon over time. And I've heard of other people getting it stuck in very somewhat recently. I also had that happen to myself. Uh, and if you have that happen, the best way to get it unstuck if normal methods of like hammering on it don't fix it, and they usually will not, it'll usually only make it worse, um, simply shoot it. The recoil is extreme on any rifle. I'm not saying that, you know, 5.56 or 5.45 is actually going to give you any trouble, but on this muzzle end, it is extreme in relation to this detent pin. It is plenty to get it to pop back out. Um, 
And when I had that issue, doing that fixed it. So just do that and uh, it should be fixed. If it still is stuck after that, then you'll have to deal with getting your front sight post removed. But anywho, let's get on with the rest of the lubrication of this rifle. I'm gonna be using just normal, uh, just Hoppies number nine I have in this squeeze container, which is quite nice. I would recommend using a thicker grease, especially on an AK, it works quite well. Uh, particularly white lithium grease is quite good. That's what a lot of the guys who really know what they're talking about recommend, so it's what I use. However, um, I only have a spray version and uh, that's not a good option for this. Um, it makes it quite awkward to use. So that's why I'm using this. If you have it, or if you don't have one of these and you want to get, you know, like some sort of grease, then definitely go with white lithium. It's very cheap. You can get it in like a hardware or automotive store. You can also use motor oil. I've heard of people doing that. Uh, the problem with motor oil, however, is uh, if it gets cold, which it is pretty much year round, this is one of the rare months when it's not here, um, but especially if it's cold, if, if you're using motor oil on your rifle, it uh, can gum up really badly. If you're in certain states, that won't matter. So just kind of know where you're at and uh, go from there. But the places where we're going to want to make sure to lubricate is the hammer, because the bolt carrier is going to ride over it. So just doing a little bit right there. Then on the bolt carrier group, this is where the vast majority of the rest of the lubrication is going to be taking place going to be putting a little bit of oil also here on the bottom of the bolt carrier, similarly where it rides over the hammer. Gonna put a little bit here on the top where it will, sometimes it, it will kind of make contact with the top of your gas tube area, just a little bit. You can see mine makes a little bit because it's pretty uh, cleaned off of all of its finish right there. You don't need to do a whole lot there. And then one other area that I actually forgot the first time I did this video is do a little bit in your channel here for the bolt. Uh, you don't need any on the bottom there, but you want it especially on the sides. I shouldn't say you don't need any on the bottom there, but uh, just a little bit. And you can do this with the bolt in as I have it now. I kind of prefer to do it this way because then you can just run the bolt back and forth a little bit and just kind of work the oil in to where it wants to be. I'm also going to go ahead and just apply a bit of oil right here, just again because it kind of rides over on that spot. One more area you're going to want to put a little bit of lubrication on is the, the rails I mentioned earlier, the bolt carrier rides on. Doesn't need a whole lot, and also I would just do the top. You really don't need to do any on the bottom. It's just going to drip down if you do anyway. If you want to do a little bit, then go ahead. But Yeah, it, it really doesn't need that much, and you can see here I already have some on, and actually I put on a little bit too much, but just a tiny bit helps to just smooth out things and make sure you don't have any rust issues and stuff like that. And that's about it for lubrication. Not a whole lot that needs lubricating on here. So just pop your bolt carrier group in. Uh, make sure, uh, and I do say actually pop, like uh, you'll want to start it right here and then kind of push it down and then ride it forward as I did. Same thing with your recoil spring guide. Just push it over those here at the rear and then just slide it back the rest of the way. And then, in this case, I can just close it on a standard dust cover where it's just a stamped piece of metal. You're going to want to line it up at the front. You have a kind of a lip here underneath your rear sight. So line up the front first until it gets pushed in there. And it's easy to have it drop down, so make sure it is lined up. You'll notice. Um, because it won't go in all the way and it'll just fall back out if you don't have it lined up right. So, once you have it lined up there, some dust covers are tighter than others, and I will show a trick if you have issues with that in just a moment. Otherwise, just push it down. Uh, so kind of push forward, I should say, into that lip and push it down over the recoil spring guide button looking thing here at the back. You have one that you're having trouble with, a little trick you can do to resolve that is take your recoil spring guide and push it to the side ever so slightly to where it's gonna want to almost come out on its own, but not quite. So just like that, set your dust cover over like it would normally be and hold it right in place. With your hand in place right here, just rack the bolt. 
and there you go. So that covers it. Had I not been explaining, this you know would be done in just a few minutes. It's very straightforward to clean. If I didn't take apart anything, because uh, you can take apart the recoil spring guide further as well, uh, I would say that's not necessary under normal maintenance. Um, you can, there's a few tricks to take that apart as well, but yeah, just for basic maintenance, that's all you need to do. It can also be a good idea once you get everything put back together. Just do a function check really quick. So to do a, a good function check, of course, make sure you're clear. So dry fire it, see the hammer or hear the hammer go forward, keep holding the trigger back, reset the uh, hammer, get it cocked again, release the hammer, make sure you hear a click, and then we're good. That covers everything that I had for this video. I hope you all found this informative. Thank you all for watching, especially if you got this far, because most people don't make it through the entire video. That's just how YouTube is. Uh, let me know if you have any other questions in the comments. Otherwise, I hope to see you all in the next video. So take care. See you all then.